It's obviously very simple to connect a screen to a computer. You just take the cable, you plug it into the back of the computer, and you plug the other end into your screen. But what many people don't really think about is what kind of cable is used to do so. So let's start off with good old VGA. A VGA connector usually looks like this. It's kind of a bulky connector, it's blue, and it's got a screw-type locking mechanism. Now the signal that VGA carries is an old-fashioned analog video signal. Now the problem with an analog video signal is that there can be loss of quality. Now, if you have a 720p screen, or a screen that has a lower resolution than 720p, a VGA cable will do fine, and the image quality will look just fine as well. But when you have a screen that has a higher resolution than 720p, or maybe even full HD, or even higher than that, you'll see that the image starts to get kind of blurry. And this is the thing with VGA. It can virtually support any screen resolution you want, but the higher you you set the resolution, the blurrier the image quality becomes, and that's because it uses an analog video signal. But of course, if you have a small screen uh, and you don't have a lot of money, then VGA is a perfect solution for you. Also, its locking mechanism is a really nice feature because it prevents you from accidentally disconnecting your cable from your computer or your monitor. Next up is DVI, and DVI connectors look like this. They're actually pretty similar to VGA ones, only they have more pins, they're even bigger, they're even bulkier, and they use the exact same locking mechanism. The main advantage of DVI is that it uses a fully digital video signal. Now the nice thing about a digital video signal is that the quality doesn't degrade as you amp up the resolution. Speaking of resolutions, there are two different versions of DVI. There is DVI Single Link and Dual Link. Now the difference is that Dual Link version has basically got more pins, and therefore it has got more bandwidth, and it supports a higher resolution. Single Link DVI goes up to 1900 by 1200 pixels at 60 Hz or 60 frames per second, but Dual Link DVI goes up to 2560 by 1600 at 60 Hz or 60 frames per second. And again, even at those resolutions, the quality doesn't go down. You do not get a blurry image, you get a perfectly sharp image quality. So with DVI, you get a nice solid locking mechanism and great sharp image quality. Only it doesn't go above 2560 by 1600 pixels if you want an even bigger screen and it's just a very big, bulky connector. So then, there is also HDMI, and this is what an HDMI connector looks like. It's much smaller and slimmer than VGA and DVI, but it still has the same image quality as DVI, since it uses the same kind of digital video signal. Now, HDMI has a few more advantages. HDMI supports resolutions up to 4K, so that is 3840 by 2160, and it does so at 24 FPS when it's HDMI 1.4, and HDMI 2.0 actually supports 4K at 60 Hz. And again, it all does it without loss of quality, so no blurry images like with VGA. What is also really nice about HDMI is that it also carries sound. So if you don't have separate speakers for your computer, um, HDMI also carries an audio signal. So then you can actually use the speakers in your screen or TV, in, if that has speakers. But HDMI supports 8-channel audio, so that is a really nice feature as well. A drawback of HDMI is that it doesn't have a locking mechanism. It plugs into the port just like a USB device. It can it can be pulled out of its socket pretty easily, which is a slight drawback. And at last but not least, there is also DisplayPort. Now a DisplayPort connector looks like this. It's kind of like an HDMI plug, only it does have a locking mechanism not as solid as the locking mechanism for DVI and VGA, but it's still quite good. Also, the technology that it uses is quite impressive. 
So first of all, DisplayPort has got insane bandwidth. So much bandwidth, in fact, that the current version of DisplayPort support, supports up to 8K resolutions at 60Hz, or 60 frames per second. That is so high that there is not even a screen out there at the moment of recording this that supports those kinds of resolutions. On top of that, DisplayPort supports technologies like AMD's FreeSync and NVIDIA G-Sync. Um, if you don't know what they are, just Google it, but th it's really cool actually. Some people need it, some people don't, but if you want to use it, you need DisplayPort. And also, DisplayPort carries an audio signal, just like HDMI. And on top of that, it's also really good for people who have a lot of screens connected to one computer. You see, if you use an older port, such as HDMI or DVI or VGA, you need two ports on the computer to use two monitors. Okay, you could try to connect two monitors to one HDMI port or one DVI port, but then you get a cloned image, so each monitor will display the same thing because the video signal is simply cloned by your splitter. Well, with DisplayPort that is not the case. You can actually buy a little hub that you can then plug into the DisplayPort and then you can plug up to three displays into that hub and you, you'll you be able to use them like this. So you can use multiple screens with only one display port. So if you have three display ports on a computer, you can connect up to nine displays to that. So now you might be thinking, ha, huh, display port seems like the absolute best thing there is. It supports insane resolutions. It's It's got a locking mechanism. It carries an audio signal. It supports the latest technologies and it supports multiple screens on one port. And you're right, technically display port is the best but screens and computers and other hardware for that matter that support DisplayPort can be expensive. So I'd say that most people don't need DisplayPort. Actually HDMI or DVI is probably going to be fine for the majority of people out there. Also I don't recommend you use VGA because again if you go above 720p resolution you're just going to see that it gets kind of blurry. Okay, that brings us to the end of this video, so I hope you've enjoyed the video, I hope you know what kind of cable you should use to connect a computer to a display, and thank you for watching, of course.